Hello and welcome again to Proceeding Onward in America. POA. Welcome to our POA blog episode number five. Woohoo! And today we're going to talk about how you can make money or save money while RVing. Or on the road. different things that we did we've heard of and we know of where people work camp or found ways to make money while it was on the road mm -hmm. and one thing we did in the very beginning was the rover and the secret shopper yes so when we were traveling and we didn't want to be stationary uh, we found out that you can do secret shopping or if you like to watch pets dogs cats you can do Rover. Um, we tried it for a little bit. Rover really didn't pick up too much. We did watch a cute little dog one time. Made some money. Um, you're not going to become millionaires. And then we did Secret Shoppers. And we went to different areas like Best Buy. We went to a GMC place and found out that Chevy's makes GMC. If you didn't know that. You learned that. I kind of figure that but didn't really knew that <laughs> yeah so Chevy came first and they went to GMC so that's why a lot of their sh Silverados look the same as a GMC mm, what's one of their names <laughs> Sierra Sierra that is the name <laughs> yep 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 um, we did check out a GMC Sierra and she was gorgeous yes she was she was I kind of fell in love with her because she was red Oh my gosh. I wanted to buy her, but they was asking too much. And we weren't, we were just doing secret shopping. But come to find out, secret shopping, even though it doesn't take too long to do, a lot of the paperwork afterwards for it filling out the forms is a pain in the butt. Pain in the butt to earn 20 bucks, maybe, if that. On top of it, you had to sometimes go purchase something and prove that you purchased something. So if you go to Best Buy, you gotta purchase something to prove that you were there talking to these people and you have to remember everything about these people. Like if they wore glasses, what color hair they were. It was like you had to memorize the whole conversation that was going on. So what we did was kinda use my phone as a recorder in my pocket. So we had to record everything that we were saying and then go home and listen to our recordings and catch what the question was. So if you do like shopping, I'd say this is for you. But if not, don't do that. <laughs> no. So we haven't really done that lately. Um, but it was it was interesting to learn. Mm -hmm. It was interesting to do, and it was something cool to experience. Experience yeah. in a yeah. weird way. And the rover thing was also great. We got to meet a good couple of dogs and went on a hike with these dogs. One of them was too old to go hiking anyway. Yeah, Bingo was too old. But the small one definitely had a ball of energy. She was great. <laughs> Wait, what are some other ways? Well, there are campgrounds like KOA and other campgrounds. They are Jellystone Park and probably of other type of couple of um, state parks. Some of them are volunteer work and some of them you just work and kind of pay for your site. And then you got some that actually pay you and you can stay there for free or pay a small fee for staying there. Mm -hmm. So they, you got to kind of do some research on that, um, investigate in it, look it up and talk to the camp people that's in charge of the camp owners to find out what type of deal you can get. There are negotiable, but a lot of campground owners don't like to negotiate too much. But you can if you're a good negotiator. Yeah. So our first one that we did um, was a KOA. And it was a franchise ran one. And we worked 
for our spot. We didn't get paid. So we had to work at least 36 hours a week for our spot. And if you're not making any income, you really are just working for free. And um, yeah, your savings will deplete over time. So if you are on social security or you have a set budget where you can only make so much a year or whatever have you, or you're happy with what you got, working at one of these campgrounds is fine for you. Um, but with us, we have bills. So then we ended up going to another KOA, which was corporate owned. That one pays you by the hour and gives you a cheaper site to pay for. So it kind of works out a little bit. Um, different states pay different amounts, but they all charge the same 175 fee. And then you got um, state parks. Some of them are volunteers and some of them pay you to you know, take care of the park. And they're great jobs. And doing this work camper thing, especially for campground, actually got its cons and pros. And one of the good pros about it is that you get to stay at a, this state location or city location and you get to explore whenever you're not working. So you get to see more of the state or location that you're going to. And that's pretty much pretty good because you get to explore more and don't have to worry about parking your big old rig and driving this far and gas here and there. So everything kind of works out in a way. The only thing is it just doesn't pay that well to move on to the next location or move on to your next journey. Well, there are some, like KOAs, they'll give you some vouchers to, if you're going from one KOA to another during your transition time that you can use at other KOAs um, as you travel. Mm -hmm. But they only give you so many and there's certain parks that will allow and some that won't. So just be cautious of that if you're doing KOA. Um, as for... Jellystone or any of the other campgrounds, we don't really know what they do. Um, but if you know, comment down below. Let us know what you have experienced while working at campgrounds or at state parks. And then you got Amazon Camp Force. They're another kind of work camper place. And they're also great. They definitely pay you and they pay for your campsite uh, to a certain amount, which is I think is 550 depending where you are yeah um they're mostly located in kentucky and tennessee and they have one in nevada and you get paid good they definitely pay you 15 bucks an hour um but you are working about 40 to 60 hours a week and they're mandatory some of them would say it's volunteer um extra hours during the holiday season that's when they usually hire from November to February and during the like Christmas and Thanksgiving time during Black Friday and all that it becomes mandatory hours so if you don't plan on working 60 hours a week or on your feet a lot of the times I wouldn't suggest it for you yes because you're working 10 hours a day and approximately six days a week mm -hmm. so if you like to work and you like to stand on your feet all the time it's a great job for you today. But if you want to do this to put some money together and save it up, it's actually a great experience in there as well because all of these hours you work in for these two, three months, you can put a lot of money together and keep on going around your journey to wherever you want to go next and just come back the next following year and stack up again. And just know that uh, after you finish working a contract at Amazon Camp Force, they do give out bonuses. So if you're able to stay there during that whole time, finish out your contract, you can expect a bonus at the end of it. And that's just more money added to your pockets. Mm -hmm. uh, so a couple other things that we noticed while we were traveling are travel nurses. They travel around to spot to spot. They stay at an area for a couple of months and take care of whatever they have to take care of. And there's also like web designers and any, a lot of people that work from their home. Um, we're not really techie, so we can't really give you any This is the pointers. only tech work we kind of know so far. Yeah. Neither one of us is a web designer or a web developer or an app developer. <laughs> we don't know that much computer tech. 
No. So no. we can't do that job. So we have no idea what that job experience. But there's a lot of people out there that can do that, and this is another way they can have an income. Mm -hmm. and oh, and photography too. There's some people that do a lot of photography. And photography as well. Mm -hmm. That's right. I, I know um, Mandy is actually one of my favorite photographers. I watch her YouTube channel all the time. Yep, Mandy Lee. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, lo I love her channel because well, she, she put out some great, great photos. Yeah, I think she originally started as a photographer. Didn't she, she say that? Yep. She and originally then, started yeah. out as a photographer and then she decided to start traveling and make using that to make money. So she sells her photos and sells it online. It's pretty good. And then you got some people who make money off of credit card purchases for some weird reason. Yeah, so if you have a credit card and you use it for your shopping or filling up your gas, um, we have a credit card for Gas Buddy. You save five cents off per gallon on top of being able to f use the app and see what the cheapest gas is around you. So even though you're not really making money, you are saving money that potentially could help you out later on. And then um, I also have credit cards like American Express or Visa or MasterCard, any of those type things that give you cash back and that will you can use to help pay for your bills or for e-cards as well. So we have used um, my credit cards and we actually, when we bought all the stuff to get started working on inside, uh, we used uh, e-cards and the e-cards was for Home Depot and our 60 some odd dollars worth of stuff with my military discount on top of the e-cards, it ended up costing us a little bit over $6 to do what we did in there. And that is why you see us out here. We're not ready to show you the inside yet. No, that's still a secret. So you gotta stay tuned for our future videos. <laughs> Only our Patreon knows what the inside looks like. Mm-hmm. Yep, our Patreons know. And a very select few like my mom. So, <laughs> if you want to know what the inside looks like, become our Patreon. If not, you're gonna have to wait till the videos <laughs> ready to upload. <laughs> yeah, we still have to produce that. Well, that's about all we know for work camping. Is mm -hmm. there anything you have to add about work camping? Any other Pacific jobs you might know of that can help other people travel and work and still enjoy their vacation and make money for their vacation? Mm -hmm. So comment down below and always make sure that you subscribe to us. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up for this video as well. And keep following us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and again, our Patreon account. Don't forget to become our Patreon so we can make more videos like this. And you get sneak peeks of everything that's going on right now. In our lives. <laughs> but bye-bye for now. Later. Can you tell we live near an airport? Uh, near one. We're close enough to one because it's about to land. It's 30 minutes away. It's not 30 minutes away. Look how low he is.